It is time to get fit with our resident expert on health and fitness. This is Health Matters. We have Shine in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. How was your weekend? Ah, uh, it was fantastic. Oh, and so did you run in that um, that half marathon, or you were talking about preparing for a marathon for a while now? So oh, yeah, that's that's in a month. Okay, okay. I ran 10k marathon yesterday. <gasps> Ooh, and I had my personal best record of, of 10k. Oh, I I got in uh, by. 52 minutes 55 seconds <gasps> mm. my goal was to, to come within an hour because last year yes. for um 10k around this time yes. i did about one hour one minute and 10 seconds <gasps> oh so, so you I'm definitely like, beat it by like several minutes yeah and Congrats. then a group of a uh, group of friends about uh-huh. 10 of us ran together mm. and most of us broke personal records oh that's awesome yeah you know like uh <clears throat> i don't want to compare with like uh, my friends or other people, but overcoming my own limit is the fair competition, right? Oh, yeah. So I was very, very happy. And mm-hmm. I was also very happy for all of my friends that trained with me mm-hmm. and then broke their personal records. Mm. So, uh, you know, I really I really thanked all my running buddies mm-hmm. for making it happen together. Awesome. It was very special to share that, you know, memories and life you know, it's the, like a life experience, right? Oh, of course, and and not only that, you're not doing it only on your own for yourself, but if you're doing it with a, a you know a bunch of friends or colleagues or whatever, mm-hmm. I think it's that much more meaningful. Yeah, mm. and um, yeah, of course, next challenge is a half marathon Ooh. next month for all of us. Oh yeah, so we will continue to train. Oh well, congrats on breaking your personal record, and mm-hmm. to everybody else who is even able to who are able to finish. <laughs> I think that is a feat in itself. So. Uh, Congrats to everybody. So, um, did you think you were, you know, uh, gonna break your record? Did you do anything special to work up to that? Oh uh, well, I haven't really trained for running mm-hmm. um, before I made my resolution, New Year's resolution to run a half marathon. Okay. So ever since then, I ran at least about once a week, mostly twice a week mm. for about two months so okay. far. And uh, I also did strength training and interval training on mm-hmm. top of that. So I think tra- training cardio and strength together has been very helpful. Mm-hmm. But since my cardio cannot keep up with my strength, so I think I need to run more now. Ah. And actually, I took a break from running for like two or three weeks because I had lower back pain. Mm-hmm. But strengthening core muscles and sh- stretching more helped me recover faster. Oh, well, um, mm-hmm. I'm so glad once again of what you were able to accomplish. But, you know, I'm I'm very curious. So um, how do you eat before a race? Because I would think that if you eat too much, maybe, mm. you, I don't know, but like especially if you don't rest enough after you eat, I get like cramps like on, on my side, like in my, in my rib cage. So yeah. what do you like consume? Yeah, because the race was early in the morning. Yes. So I, you know, think about it. If I eat too much in the morning, you know, yeah. Uh, it will be very disturbing. Yes. So a day before, uh-huh. I ate lots of carbs. Like? Like rice and sweet potatoes. Okay, so we're not talking about like kwaja and like uh-uh. hammers and yeah. things like that. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. to store enough good energy for the race. Okay. And the morning for the uh, before the uh, race, yes, um, I had a bowl, bowl of oatmeal mm-hmm. with a half a banana that are also rich in carbs but easy to digest. Yes. You know, it's not going to be like... Uh, disturbing my stomach so much. As you're running, right? And lastly, it's a little bit of secret, but about 30 minutes before the race, mm-hmm. I drank a shot of Dutch coffee Ooh. to boost my energy level. Really? Coffee? So how does like coffee or caffeine help you? Well, when you exercise, your body uses glycogen, mm-hmm. a type of sugar that you get from eating carbs for energy. Okay. But once those stores are depleted at the end of a long workout, long mm-hmm. workout means over one hour, mm-hmm. you may feel tired, sluggish, mm-hmm. and that's like hitting the wall, right? Okay. What caffeine does, that is, uh, it slows the depletion of glycogen by encouraging the body to use more fat as fuel, which helps to conserve energy over long periods of time. Mm -hmm. So for this reason, sports that deplete a lot of glycogen, especially endurance events, benefit the most from caffeine consumption. Mm -hmm. Activities last longer than an hour with with sustained efforts, such as running, in my case, Mm -hmm. or cycling and cross-country skiing, 
Beijing all benefit from caffeine supplementations by allowing athletes to increase their endurance, accuracy, and speed. Ah, uh, but I don't know. Uh, I've always thought like maybe caffeine kind of dehydrates your body, like especially maybe during exercise. Yeah, well, we've all heard that warning that caffeine has, uh, you know, that effect and dehydrate you. Mm -hmm. However, research shows that this widely held assumption is actually not quite true unless you consume a lot of caffeine. Oh, okay. So um, a lot of caffeine means about 500 to 600 milligrams of caffeine. Um, that is about three of grande size coffee oh, okay. per day. Mm. So I don't, I, I think some people will drink this much, but not, yes. not me. That's not me. Okay. And for comparison, um, an eight ounce cup of coffee has about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Mm -hmm. And you know the um, short size coffee yes. at Starbucks? That's about um, eight ounces. Mm -hmm. So that much has 100 milligrams. Okay. And so, um, so unless you drink that much, you don't really uh, have to worry too much. Worry too much. Ah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, what about some side effects? Because I'm sure people are always worried about side effects to anything, including mm -hmm. caffeine. Yeah, the key with caffeine, um, like other, like. like any other things is to consume in, in moderation mm. and to know how to listen to your body because people react differently to caffeine. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, some people, yes, who drink caffeine report feeling anxious, stomach pain, insomnia, and heart palpitation. Mm. And some people uh, close to me uh, experienced diarrhea. Ooh. <laughs> Basically, if you have trouble of any of these, avoiding caffeine may be one way mm -hmm. to help manage these problems. And for certain groups of people who are more, you know, sensitive to effect of caffeine can yes. have some serious downsides. Mm. And and ex uh, for especially especially for elder elderly, mm -hmm. children and teens, yes, pregnant women, those with high blood pressure, Anxiety or heart disease should avoid caffeine. Yes, yes. But, you know, normal, healthy adults, you don't really have to worry too much unless you are very sensitive to caffeine. Mm -hmm. And if you're concerned about how caffeine may affect your health, you should speak with your doctor. Right. And speaking of safety, how much coffee per day is considered to be safe? Mm, the majority of studies done on caffeine suggest that people ha can safely consume up to three or four cups of coffee per day. But that means eight ounces size. Yeah, not the whole, like the real big, mm -hmm. like the huge sizes that are in very, you yeah, know, the, that are trendy these, si the these days. The grande size mm -hmm. is about 16 ounces. That's a double mm, the size. Okay. So maybe two of grande size are the safe limit but of course that's the upper limit yeah yes. upper limit yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so definitely this is something we should think about because everybody around me anyways they are like you know coffee addicts they love coffee but um what about in terms of exercise performance mm. so uh if you are using caffeine to perform better if mm -hmm. you want to um the optimal caffeine dose is about three to six milligram per your body weight. Okay. So I weighed about 55 kilogram. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, multiplied by this, six, 165 milligram to up to 330 milligrams. Ah. So that's about one grande size brewed coffee. Mm -hmm. Will be good enough for me, mm -hmm. but it depends on your personal limit and preference. Okay. Well, I would rather have like three shots of espresso. Ooh. One shot is about 75 milligram. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to uh, drink that much liquid before <laughs> exercising. Ah, right? so oh, well, like whether so try to consume like the right amount of caffeine for you mm -hmm. about thirty minutes to an hour before training, mm. since it is quickly absorbed to our body and peaks in the blood in one to two hours. Ooh. And I, I don't recommend using it for the first time right before an important competition, because you're you're not sure of how you how you will feel with it. Right, how your body's going to react. So mm -hmm. you should actually maybe practice, practice yeah. you know, even with the coffee or caffeine before you go on a major mm -hmm. competition, right? Yeah, otherwise, enjoy your cup of coffee. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for bringing a, a very interesting topic to our listeners today on this Monday morning. Thank you, Shine. We'll check in with you next week. Okay, bye-bye. And I'll be back after this. 안녕하세요. 부산 이지블루 박기량입니다.